The big news and what I want to comment about is, uh, you know, the amazing show uh, that ended yesterday, the, the amazing theater that we got at the uh, Democratic National Convention. I mean, you got to give it to them. They, they put on a show and uh, they have figured out, I mean, to Kamala Harris's credit, to her people's credit, whoever is running the show over there, since um, since they benched Biden, um, to their credit, they have got it. They, what, what they get is that the American people are not looking for a far-left political party with wacky social ideas um, and, a, and, a, and a wacky approach to foreign policy. So what you got from the Democratic Party was this centrist presentation, almost nothing woke, uh, I mean, who could imagine that four years after BLM, BLM would not barely be mentioned? I don't know if it was mentioned, but not in any significant way. Who would imagine that, you know, identity politics would barely be mentioned? Yes, uh, Michelle Obama talked about systemic racism, but nobody made a big deal out of it. I mean, the reality is that Kamala Harris, if she gets elected, is will be proof that systemic racism in America does not exist. Um, they, uh, they talked tough on national defense and, uh, uh, you know, so gone is the America is the devil, the America is colonial, America is, it just didn't come up during the convention. Uh, what else didn't come up? Uh, I, I mean, really, the whole woke agenda, of course, the main thing that didn't come up, in spite of the protests outside the convention, much, 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 much smaller protests than anybody expected, uh, was the whole Palestinian thing, the whole protest movement, the whole anti-Israel crowd. Indeed, Kamala Harris went out of her way to make a uh, a case that she would guarantee the protection of the state of Israel, da 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 um, And, you know, threw a small bone to the Palestinians, but not much, given how big of an issue this has been on the far left. So what the Democratic Party wanted you to come away from this convention with a feeling of is that this is a centrist party, that it has no interest in woke, no interest in identity politics, no interest in the whole array of agendas from, you know, anti-Israel and everything else that is associated with the far left. I don't know if they succeed in convincing people of that. It surely seems that way. Uh, I've been reading um, articles and blog posts from people um, writing about this, both on the left and on the right. And it really does seem like they are convinced, oh no, the Democratic Party is now a centrist party. Um, it, it, it really is a pretty amazing, but not just centrist. This is the thing that, and this is the big contrast with the Republicans, and this is what might get them a win, is that they came across as positive optimistic, pro-American. Um, they've really figured out that the way I think they believe that they can beat Trump, whether it's right or not, I do not know, but they think they can beat Trump, is by contrasting, contrasting his whiny, negative, dark, depressing demeanor and positions with some optimism. We're moving forward, the future's right, da 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 whatever, whatever. You know, it, it, it's all, we'll, we'll get to what it all means in a minute, but, but this is the facade they're putting on. The facade is, we're centrists, we're, we're not interested in the far left. Um, the facade is that we are, uh, you know, even climate change was not that big of a deal. Climate change was not that big of a deal. Clean air, clean water, yeah, we all believe in that. But they even played down the anti-fossil fuel, the anti-fracking, and the whole climate change agenda, just because they know.
it's not popular with Americans. So they're not making a big deal out of it. So on the one hand, they are winking and, you know, thumbs up to the kind of to the to, to, to the left, saying, Yeah, yeah, we, we still believe in all that stuff, but we're not gonna say it publicly, so vote for us. And and they've energized, I think, a lot of young people and they've energized a lot of uh, their base. Their base is super energized and super positive. On the other hand, to middle America and to uh, swing voters and um, Republicans who are anti-Trump and to others and independents, they are saying, oh, no, no, we're a centrist party. We believe in, we're not, gonna ch we're not a revolutionary party. We're not going to change America. There was no talk, for example, on stacking the Supreme Court. There was no attacks of, on the Supreme Court. There, there, there was no talk of any kind of radical agenda. We're just mainstream. We're just middle of the road. We're just like the old days. Indeed, they sounded. Peggy Noonan who wrote an op-ed. Uh, Peggy Noonan, a speechwriter for Ronald Reagan, saying they've stolen faith and they've stolen national security and they've stolen family and hard work. They've stolen all these values from Republicans. They sound like the old Republican Party. Um, <laughs> so this is this is the persona that they wanted to reflect. Uh, uh, you know, Kamala Harris herself gave a again technically good speech, very conversational, passionate at moments. She delivered it well. Uh, she came across, I think, really well um, as this prosecutor, she's a centrist, she's never been attracted to the far left, and all of that. One thing they understand, one thing they understand, and I think the Republicans understand this as well, is on the one issue you can be far left on, the one issue that the American people don't seem to care if you're far left on, is economics. Economic liberty, nobody seems to really care. So the Republicans can be for central planning and for tariffs and for all of that. And the Democrats can be, I mean, they want to raise taxes on the wealthy. They want to raise taxes on capital gains. They, 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 they want to, you know, pass a law for gouging and all of this stuff. Now, all of this will need bipartisan support. So, And, of course, they're for industrial policy and all of this. But the reality is that from the perspective of the American voter, from the perspective of independent voters, from the perspective of swing voters, from the perspective of Democratic voters, they don't care about stuff like that. I think the general consensus in America today is Republicans, Democrats, higher taxes, lower taxes, this president, that president, the economy just seems to chug along. Who cares? There's no principled thinking. There's no real recognition of the value of free market. There's no real recognition of what drives the American economy and why it is successful. And as a consequence, there's a lot of magical thinking. There's a lot of make, make stuff up. And there's just a complete abandonment of any respect, any respect for markets. A lot of talk about freedom at the Democratic National Convention. Lots of talk about freedom. Indeed, more talk about freedom in the Democratic Convention than in the Republican Convention. Neither of them know what the word means. And certainly, when the Democrats talk about freedom, they're not talking about your economic freedom, your freedom to contract, your freedom to build a business, your freedom to hire and fire who you want and pay them what you negotiate with them. None of that exists, but none of that exists in the Republican Party either, because Americans don't care. Because the reality is that if you had a, even a soft, pro-capitalist, I don't know, Nikki Haley type running, I don't, think, I don't think that resonates. Not right now. Not with America today. Um... So uh, the area which I care about, 
I care about a lot of areas, but the area that I care about, economic liberty and economic freedom, I care about capitalism, yeah, doesn't have a champion, not in this race, not in these two political parties, not in the political parties that we see before us today. Uh, but the Democrats put on a show. I mean, here are the issues that um, Kamala Harris talked about in her speech. This is, I'm taking this from the Free Press, uh, one of their articles. Okay, here it is. In the order of appearance of the issues. Hard work, family values, Republican stuff, civil rights, fight for the little guy, Trump's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, January 6th, okay, democracy at stake, protect the middle class, jobs, economy, lower costs, cheaper groceries, Trump tax, all right, all the economic stuff getting out of the way, right? But all in, in, in the context of positives, we've created jobs, lower costs, all of this stuff, right? Then abortion, your body, your choice. Then bad gun violence, gay stuff, clean water, air, climate change, just a teeny little bit, voting rights, border security. She came out tough on border security. She was going to stop you know, illegal immigration into the country. She was tough on immigration, right? She, she, she very smartly, in my view, has, is trying to take that issue away from Donald Trump. Take that issue away from Donald Trump. And in a debate, she will accuse Donald Trump for got, coming out against a bipartisan bill that would have dramatically reduced illegal immigration. And she might be successful at doing it. Talked about space. Uh, uh, ceasefire, kind of, uh, maybe pressure on Israel, but, but we'll support Israel. We, we've got their back. And then a bone to the Palestinians. And then folksy wisdom from mom. And then strength, freedom, opportunity, dignity. We're not going back. We are not going back. And we are certainly not going back. So, uh, you know, very much a message about moving forward, right? Moving forward. So... Yeah, I mean, they, um, they, uh, they can talk and they can pull it off and they can pull off. I think, I think what they realize is, I think what they realize is, um, all they need to do really is come as cross as normal, as sane. You know, this is related to their attempt to paint Trump as if this is really difficult. And Vance is weird, as abnormal, as maybe a little crazy, as angry, as dark. And they are going to portray themselves, Kamala and the rest of them, as sane, as normal, as just another presidential candidate, like the, all the presidential candidates before Trump, as American, pro-American. She had a number of lines there about pro-America, pointing to the flag, I mean, American exceptionalism is back on the Democratic side. Again, great theater. Great theater. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, the best thing that could have happened to the Democratic Party was, was Biden stepping down. Instead of that depressing misery, um, pessimism, dark view, um, and, and just depression because the guy's not there, they have got energy. They have got it. Um, now, let's be clear. Much of this is, all of it is theater. All of it is theater. Kamala Harris is not pro-Israel and is not, but, she, you know, Kamala will do what is politically necessary. Kamala doesn't believe in much. Uh, on economic freedoms, we know what Kamala stands for. Higher taxes, more regulations, more controls, more power to the bureaucrats, more power to the regulatory agencies. The only thing stopping us from descending into great and Greta fascism is um, other courts, other courts, which, which have taken a positive turn towards an anti-regulation, anti-regulatory agency view anti-administrative state view. Um, they still hate billionaires. 
they won't say it quite as much. It, there was a funny scene. So Bernie Sanders goes up there and he does the Bernie Sanders shtick about how awful billionaires are and they don't pay taxes and they don't do this and you know billionaires are the enemy. And guess who speaks right after Bernie Sanders? I mean, literally, who programmed this? It, it could have been a comedy skit. The guy coming up next is Pritzker the governor of Illinois. Now, Pritzker is a billionaire, mainly because he inherited it. Pritzker is a billionaire. He's part of uh, the family that started Hyatt Hotels, and uh, he inherited a lot of money, and he's a billionaire. So Pritzker's out there basically saying, I'm a billionaire, and I'm richer than Donald Trump. Donald Trump's not a real billionaire. I'm a real billionaire. This is right after Sanders has just said billionaires are the enemy of the people. <laughs> so that's a Democratic Party for you. Um, so they, um, uh, they put on this, again, this theater, but, but we know what they actually stand for. Now, I've told you for a while that I think woke is a big political agenda is in decline. It just it, it doesn't sell. The American people don't buy it. It will still be around in uh, in more subtle ways, less in the headlines, less in uh, politics per se, and more in the DEI departments that have been already set up and already exists, and are not just going to disappear one day. Although, as I told you in a story the other day, they are in decline. They're dis they're, they're slowly being eliminated in places like Silicon Valley. But the, the, the woke agenda is, is diminishing. It's in decline because it, Americans don't want it. Americans don't like it. Um, so, um, you know, you have to give it to the Democrats. They, they got it together. They presented a united front. They presented a front that is um, that is uh, centrist. They uh, uh, pretended like uh, woke agenda. They're not interested in it anymore. Even as uh, I'm sure, Harris administration will do all kinds of things to try to elevate identity politics. They're pretending it doesn't exist. Uh, you know, Obama was never huge on on the kind of woke stuff. He was kind of critical of it, and I think. I think he will have a lot of sway on kind of the Kamala, Kamala attitudes. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we should all worry about Waltz. Uh, I mean, he's really bad. Um, it, it, he's really a, a real leftist, much more than Kamala is, who I think is, is more swayable in either direction. Uh, and uh, we should worry about the Democrats because they're not a political body of freedom. They're not a political party of. Um, they're not the political party of, of the center. They're certainly not a political party of economic freedom, and they're not going to be as pro-Israel as past Democrats have been. Uh, they are, uh, you know, they will be influenced by their far left. There's no question about that. The whole political landscape has moved left, Republicans have moved left on, on economic issues and I think on foreign policy issues, and the Democrats have moved left. And um, But right now, Kamala looks like, um, looks like she's the favorite. I, I don't think the margins are big. I, I, I still think it's a toss-up, but with a slight edge to Kamala. Um, I think you can tell that she's probably leading in a lot of the polls uh, by the fact that Trump seems to be panicking. He, he's out of control. Uh, he was, he, you know, on, on Truth Network tweeting whatever it is. Um, he really is out of control. And and the reality is that the more he whines, the more he complains, the more he 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 is dark and negative right now. Before he could be dark and negative versus Hillary Clinton, yeah, okay, nobody liked Clinton, but everybody hated Clinton. But nobody, people don't hate Kamala. They they might not like her. They might not know her. Now we'll see. A lot is still going to happen, and there will be a debate, and some of her crazy economic ideas are going to be hashed out, and. Um, 
there could be still a lot of problems. Israel, the war is still going on. Um, in Michigan, she could lose to have a vote. I mean, it, it, there's still a lot that can happen. But uh, she's sitting pretty right now. Um, one of the things that the Democrats succeeded in doing, I don't know how, maybe, maybe it's just the reality that the whole Palestinian issue is not as big of an issue as people think. They make a lot of noise, but in terms of numbers, they're just not that big, is the protesters try to make this 1968 again, and they completely failed. They try to make the Chicago in 1968. We've talked about this. Very few, very few people showed up um, in comparison to expectations. Uh, they, they didn't have any real impact. They didn't disrupt the convention. They went into downtown Chicago and they tried to attack institutions related to Israel and there was some conflict with the police. They tore down fencing. Uh, the police arrested some people but nothing on scale, nothing to change the dynamic of the convention itself. Again, unlike 1968, where uh, the protests, I think, shaped a lot of what happened at the convention and a lot of the attitudes. And uh, uh, so, again, uh, you know, the Democrats pulled it off. You got you to gotta give them credit for that. And uh, they, are, they are in full swing trying to fool the American people into believing they've become something they are. And they might be successful. They might be very successful. Hard to tell.